I'm not sure if it still exists, but what would you say the lap record at Donington is for a National Express coach? Well, I do know that I hold it. Um, <laughs> uh, I think it was a 258, I think, was the, the lap times. But I know that I could improve that because it was wet conditions. So uh, it was in awkward conditions. If you, uh, It was a bit like Le Mans Grand Prix last weekend. Yeah, uh, and, and actually that has happened, and, and you're obviously referring to my um, my tour of Donington Park with a bus full of people. <laughs> uh, and again, that was uh, early 2000s, and um, it all started with a charity called Riders for Health, and they were selling tickets to um, people to go around the circuit on a bus. This was the day before the British Grand Prix at Donington Park. And they'd got different riders, um, Nicky Hayden, American Randy Mamola, Neil McKenzie, different riders. And the, and the catch for the people paying, I think it was £10 to do one lap of Donington Park in a bus, was to meet and get an autograph from Nicky Hayden or Randy Mamola or Neil McKenzie or some, whoever, it, Carl Fogarty, whoever it might have been. So they all happily, as the whole day went on, there was probably 50 trips. You'd get on, do one lap, get a signature from Nicky Hayden and come back in. And at the last point, about four o'clock in the afternoon, the last trip, the bus was full up and all the top riders on the day had gone off to a rider's briefing. And I was asked if I would mind going off and doing the bus tour. And what was generally expected of the, the celebrity on the bus was to stand at the front with a microphone and discuss to, or tell all the people on the bus, what it was like on a Grand Prix bike around Donington Park, which was quite difficult to do, bearing in mind you're on a, a Mercedes single decker 53 seater bus doing 30 miles an hour because that was the speed limitation had been put on the bus because people were around the circuit putting the signage and barriers up in readiness for the Grand Prix. Anyway I was asked to go and do it and the bus driver who clearly had spent all day going round and round and round listening to the same stories about on a 500 Grand Prix bike it's third gear through red gate corner accelerating fourth fifth to trainer curves and this and that looked very tired uh, he looked like he definitely needed a break. So I said, look, you go and have a cup of tea and I'll get on the bus and I'll take them around. At which point, I could not believe it. He said, you can drive a bus, can't you? And I said, yeah, I can. I didn't know how to drive a bus, but I said I could. And all the people on the back of the bus said, yes, he can. He's a truck racing driver and he'll be fine in it. So mate, he goes off and has his cup of tea and leaves me with the keys to his bus. <laughs> At which point I explained to all the people after I finally realised where the handbrake was and how to put it in gear and get it moving that we weren't going to talk about what it was like on a Grand Prix bike around Donington. We would see how fast we could get around the circuit. Bearing in mind it was meant to be one lap, I explained to them all I needed at least two, la two laps to get the heat in the tyres so that it would uh, corner quite well and that they had to lean from left to right, otherwise it was going to tip over and they'd all die, which really got their attention, as you can imagine. So I had them all in harmony. As we got to Redgate, I'd just shout to the right and all the people were moving over to the right-hand side and then we got to Craners and it was left and then right. Anyway, by lap three, I think we got down to a 258, something like that, and then the track was blocked uh, and the security had realised that either the driver had gone nuts or some lunatic was driving it and they weren't far wrong. Uh, the track got blocked and we had to come in, which was quite good timing because the brakes were just about to catch fire. Um, and that was it, 2.58, damp conditions around Donington Park, um, and most of the people enjoyed it. It was a Japanese couple that got off just going, ho, oh, ho, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> and there was one person sick. But other than that, there was about 49 people that really enjoyed the trip, and absolutely guaranteed factual, uh, backed up by my wife and my agent that comes to the shows with us, we did have a guy at the show that was on the bus that day oh, and really? he came up and it's the best trip I've ever had in my life and I love buses from this day on. So anyway, everyone got their 10 quids worth that day and they, they all became lap record holders. Mm. So um, yeah, I, I guess if, if plan B doesn't work in my life and I do run out of things to do, I can always be a bus driver. Yeah, National Express. National Express, um, yeah. They'd yeah, yeah. probably give you a, yeah. a bus again, I'm sure. I'm sure they probably wouldn't, actually. <laughs> I did get a phone call, actually. The story does go on a little bit. The boss of National Express phoned up BBC and complained that we showed it on the show. We showed it on the BBC website and he explained that um, it was bad. It didn't look right that National Express's bus should be tearing around Donington and people jumping around left and right and everything else. So I had to write a letter of apology for, for causing a bit of havoc with National Express buses.